Have you ever wanted to role play as a badass demon sprinkler? Well, you're in the right place. This video, we're going to talk about the Mundanugu Witch Doctor for Diablo 3 patch 2.6.10 and season 22, if it ever gets here. You just port around with Ingeom with your demon sprinkler and spamming Spirit Barrage and you have like Haunt giving you movement speed, Severance giving you 100% movement speed, um, Soul Harvest, Soul to Waste is giving you movement speed. So you're just constantly just getting these little mini miniature movement speed boosts along the way. And it feels really nice to just keep casting your spell and you don't have to really aim it. Um, as you can see, it's like doing damage in like a area, like a cone shape around you. Yeah, so you just kind of, you can. it's kind of like a lazy speed build in a way as you can, you know, watch Netflix and chill and all that and uh, just kind of spam buttons. You can see I put the abilities on QWE or whatever your first, whatever the easiest three keys are for you to mash. And you can just mindlessly kind of mash those keys and um, and then smash right click and you're pretty much good to go. This build's pretty fast. Again, um, this build is getting under two minute clears for T16 and GR80. Um, pretty mobile for bounties as well. Even though we're relying on Ingeom, um, it was pretty a good bounty build altogether. You can swap out the Ingeom and do like Echoing Fury or something as you're running by for bounties. But um, you know, I'll have all separate builds here on the website, bloodshed.com. But uh, one of my favorite speed, I was shocked that I like this one. A lot of people are using the chicken version of this build, the chicken Mananuga, which is a good option. You know, I always encourage you to check out other Diablo creators as they have a lot of good work. They do good work. Um, but yeah, all my builds are just what I would do. Man, what would blood do? And this is this is basically <laughs> what I would do. All right, blood. Why should I play the Mundanugu that you do? Other than it's catchy to say that um, you're getting the fourth slot in the cube now. So here's the speed build right here. Um, you can use the wormwood or the yeah the wormwood, so you don't have to actually cast locust swarm. So it's really like ease of use. You don't have to smash yet another ability. And because of the four slot, we can use all three weapons in the cube. We're gonna get into the gear section later, but this is the what's new section. And what's new, you get a fourth slot in Knight's cube. You can rock triple weapons. You can even rock a COE if you choose to do so, right? Or if you already use COE, you can use like Unity or something. I don't know what your build is, but yeah. So four slot, you're able to get those weapons plus Mundanugu that you do is the Hadrid gift for season 22 so it's a starter set it's a really good starter set one reason why it's a good starter set is you get the gazing demise at level one so if you make a level one witch doctor save your challenge rift cash okay roll blood shards you can get this at level one if you don't know what i just said and when you hit 70 you can make a level one witch doctor and roll for mojos and you'll get a gazing demise it's the only possible mojo you can get right and then you can just put it in the cube or you can wear it if you choose to do so. Now, these videos do take a lot of time to, to make, so I always appreciate a like on the video. You guys have been crushing the like button lately, and again, thank you so very much for that. There'll be chapters and timestamps in the description and in the timeline. Man, I love this chapter thing that YouTube added. I'm, I'm addicted to it. I think it looks so clean, so yeah. All right, the next section is build power. What can I complete? What can I do with the Mundanugu dock? Um, as been a theme with all these first builds that I've been doing, they're really powerful with 800 Paragon, less than 100 gem levels, and um, no augments. Really, really powerful out the gate, especially with the fourth slot, not even counting the Shadow Clone. A lot of times I don't factor in the Shadow Clone because we don't know how it's going to end up. Blizzard is doing another PTR patch this week, so that could actually change. But don't worry, Mundanugu safe. This build is not going to be touched. It's pretty much set in stone. Um, it's already came out two or three seasons ago, and we've already had, you know, their balance patch has gone through. So anyway, with the parameters down here on screen, I mean, you're looking at a pretty cozy 110, like we've been showcasing, 110 to 120 early game, and then the mastery level would be 140 to 150, depending on how hard you push and what you accomplish. I would, I could easily see people running 150 with Mundanugu next season with the Shadow Clones being um, even okay, they should be fine, plus the fourth slot, you get the extra weapon or you get the um, Convention of Elements, whatever you decide. Also in terms of power, this is the group wave clear build. Um, I'm assuming Crusader's gonna get nerfed. Right now, Satyr's the wave clear. Satyr's the wave clear, Satyr's the RGK. I'm assuming AOV gets nerfed. If it doesn't, you should be at least a top contender for wave clear as Witch Doctor's really good. 
and let's say it's not the meta for wave clear at least you know you're capable i'll find someone on the ptr leaderboard again just to kind of give you guys an example build so here's the first dude that i came across on the ptr they did a 150 he has 2000 paragon and um, he's wearing the Mundanugu set and i'll just kind of hover over it for you guys so you can get an idea of what he's running if you're going to run it I, I do four man sometimes, but it's mostly casual, like, you know, with my community, but I play hardcore solo a lot. So I do more like solo pushing and testing. So this will give you guys an idea what to build for. I'm assuming he has, um, I get the Sacred Harvester in the fourth slot or COE. If you're in a group, it probably would be COE because you need that extra damage. You don't need the survivability. So, but definitely wear COE in this version of the build. All right, blood, you got my attention. All right, how do I play this damn demon sprinkler build? So I would have Big Bad Voodoo up all the time. I would spirit walk up into here, hit them with Soul Harvest. That's gonna give us stacks for Lakumbas to keep us alive. And then I would hit them with Prononado to group them up and then start DPSing like so while keeping up your Spirit Harvest or Soul Harvest while you're attacking. Uh, use Spirit Walk Jaunt to juke Arcane Beams that try to kill you, Perendi trying to smash you, anything. And a lot of times I won't just use it on the first hit. I'll use it when I think I need it. Like if it's like a lot of incoming damage, the more you play your character, um, the more you'll get familiar with, um, you know, when to use it in certain situations, right? So just keep up Big Bad Voodoo. You're gonna fly in here. You're gonna hit him with Soul Harvest, group him up with Prodinado, and then hold down Spirit Barrage. Now, I don't know what the meta is, how people use Spirit Barrage, right? So as you're casting Spirit Barrage, it's building up, building up, building up. And all these spirits, you can see they're like you can see they're still on the battlefield even when I stop casting. It's kind of cycling through the elites. So what I like to do is when there's like five to ten percent health left on the elites, I start tapping it, and that kind of like flushes out all the rest of the spirit barrages in my mind and kills them. So I don't know if there's like a meta. If you guys do something differently, let the comments know. Let us know in the comments, and um, people can kind of see. But that's how I've always done it. Um, I did hang, hit rank one a few times when the season, when this first came out, but it doesn't mean that I wasn't doing it right, but that's just what I did, right? And it worked out great for me. So yeah, like if the lead's at 5% health, I just start tapping like really fast and um, it kind of flushes it all out, I think. And then I go on to the next pack. I'll jump into a 110 here and kind of show you guys gameplay. Again, 800 Paragon, no augments, and um, pretty much it's all here. It actually might still be on the leaderboard. This is me at the start of a greater rift. This is the 110 we are talking about. And I'm just um, spamming all my cooldowns, right? Using spirit walk when I'm in danger, spamming spirit barrage. You can see the enemy is getting chunked pretty hard here. And again, I'm using the three dagger combo, the sacred harvester, the Vuz juicer and the barber, right? Um, we're going to talk about it in the gear section, but you always want to wear the Vuz Juicer as it has like a Spirit Barrage damage buff on it, like an additive buff, but it was really, really good for the build. And it's one reason why I decided to use it. And, you know, daggers are like the fastest attacking weapons, so it's really good. It gets lots of attacks out per second. I'm just kind of gathering the mobs up here, casting Spirit Barrage. You can see you have decent wave clear, and then you can pull them together with Piranha NATO as well. And we're pulling ahead already, even on this like subpar map with like Spearman, you know, moderately tanky. I'm gonna go in here, pop the channeling pylon, look for some elites um, to actually kill so we can actually see some meaningful progress here. Oh, it looks like we have a uh, yellow. And I think there's a blue pack up later, right? So right here, I'm pretty comfortable, especially with John. So John's like three seconds of immunity like you can't, you can DPS, but they can't even hit you at all. So get really comfortable with juking through immunities. Um, you shoot over Waller, so Waller wouldn't be a problem. Slow time affix wouldn't be an issue for you, really. Um, you basically just want density and killable elites. I guess you wouldn't want impalers, but nobody would really, yeah, want impalers at that point, right? Um, you can see our, you can see our progression is off the hook, right? Um, so I'm just kind of, Slapping through here, looking for, I just grabbed a speed pylon and we're just absolutely crushing, right? Now the clones are helping me through the map also so that you can take that into account a little bit. But as soon as I zone here, I'm losing both clones and now we're cloneless, right? So this is just pure raw. You can look at the bar actually from this point. 
and it looks like we're still killing at the same speed. Um, the Witch Doctor clones uh, uh, currently in the game are solid on a 110, but they're not like insane like a Demon Hunter or Necro or Wizard at a 110 level, right? The clones have like their own tier list for themselves built in. And um, so you can see, I mean, we just Shrek that blue pack, no problem whatsoever, you know? Um, the clones have their own tier list, but we're getting a patch this week, so expect a future video kind of giving you guys a refresher. If you're watching this in a future season, it's probably funny because, you know, I don't know how it's going to turn out, so we'll have to wait and see. But all this density, oh yeah, group it up with Prana NATO. They're taking that 15% increased damage. Get in there and spam Spear Barrage and you just wreck face, right? So it's pretty solid build. And um, I would put this in the S tier, 150 capable. Um, it's up there with the best of the best. And um, I'm just going to probably show you guys the rest of this elite and then get into the next section i mean this is a shielding mob and shield mobs are notoriously harder to kill because you have to chew through that big shield that they have you know so it looks like i got proc there it's just probably getting a little cocky the mortars have high physical damage so it'd be good to not stand in the mortars if possible so yeah that's a spirit barrage doc still stronger than ever before you know i definitely love this bit this build and play style for sure all right let's talk about gear and stats now since wish doctor is very flexible you with their ability stats and stuff you don't need anything any kind of crazy breakpoints. um ideally i'd have 50 percent cooldown and 50 percent reduced resource cost um, on my 110 clear i had 45 and let's see how much reduced resource cost i've had mana cost reduction 28 percent so um, on your gloves, right, you would get like double crit cooldown and reduced resource cost. On your shoulders, you get cooldown and reduced resource cost. Now, you don't actually need resource because the way Rush of Essence works is it gives you back all your mana instantly. So you can just sit here indefinitely and cast it. You can see it'll start to go down, but then eventually you'll get so much return, it'll just get full again. And I'm still casting the whole time. But it's actually going we're working with the Captain Crimson set and you're getting damage reduction based on your reduced resource costs. So I wouldn't go crazy with it, but I'd probably go 50 and 50 if possible. It seems like a good number for me. Remember to wear the Vu's Juicer. As you can see, we can get up to 60% Spirit Barrage damage on the item, which is amazing. Plus you get the Plobotomized Rune. The Plobotomized Rune heals you. And this is what I always wanted built into the set itself. You gain life each time you Spirit Barrage, each time Spirit Barrage hits. So you're healing so much, this build's tankier than it's ever been because of it. If you wanna go optimal juice, right? I believe on paper, COE should be stronger than Vu's Juicer. So you just play the standard build and swap out Vu's for COE, basically. Here's the push build. So you can see it. I like to hover over the rings just because they're harder to see in general, right? And the stat priorities, again, check the website for the latest and greatest stat priorities. If you're on hardcore, um, Ghost Trance, you don't have to use Ghost Trance, you can use the damage version of Big Bad Voodoo, but I do like Ghost Trance, right? Especially for hardcore. And then we have the T16 build, looks like this. I swap in Avarice and Gold Wrap with uh, Boon of the Hoarder to get that gold, man. You get those free Wormwoods here. Let me slide over all this. And then we have the like the GR speed build up to like 90-ish or so. You can use this with like NGM, Ring, Rochelle's Ring. Um, when you use Horrify, you're getting the speed burst from Rochelle's Ring. So you're like, yo, Blood, how come we don't use it for T16? Well, for T16, I get the 25% movement from the Boon of the Hoarder. So I'm cool with that, you know, it's just a little bit of movement speed kick, but you could use it or you can reconfigure the build if you like it. But that's how it's working. This is haunting. And then when I haunt, I get like I have fear and I get a huge um, speed burst, right? So it's great um, for speed rifts there. If you're like new or returning or you played before, you might be confused by a few things. I'll kind of clear it up here. Um, the Ring of Emptiness, they changed it. So you do 300% increased damage to enemies affected by Haunt or Locust Swarm. It used to be both, now it's just one. And remember, this isn't this doesn't work on your pets. Speaking of pets, Spirit Barrage is not a pet anymore. It used to be a pet, the Phantasm portion. So we used to use the Enforcer gem. Not anymore, not anymore. So um, 
yeah, it's basically they changed, they fixed the bug and um, we were running Frosties after that. But since we have the four slot, we can just wear a weapon instead of Frosties in the build, right? So here's like the push build. Or I mean, we're still wearing Frosties, but um, that's the reason why, sorry. <laughs> yeah, so it's, it's not affected by a pet gem anymore. We're going Zay's, Bane, and Stricken for the push build. For groups, you definitely want to use Pain Enhancer. It is an insane damage nuke increase. Um, wow. So yeah, don't forget that. Uh, for the final thoughts of Witch Doctor, I mean, you really can't go wrong. Like I said in my other videos, if you have not played the Mundanugu set, the Spirit Barrage set that was showcased here today, I highly recommend it. It's one of my favorite builds. A lot of the new sets that they added are amazing. Um, you get to group play with it. You get pretty solid speed builds, you know, and there might be higher potential for chicken if they buff it in the next iteration of the patch. So again, remember to check my website, bloodshed.com. All my builds are there. They'll be in the description of the video for the latest and greatest version of the build. But as of right now, this is my baby. So groups, solo speeds, bounties, I mean, riff, r rainbow farming potential with chicken, technically. Um, you can do solo paragon farming because you're tankier and mobile. Pretty insane stuff, right? So definitely recommend the build if you haven't played it. Uh, you can't really go wrong with the dog. It has the, actually the fastest leveling besides Necromancer. And if that poor Necromancer doesn't get corpse gloves, right? Corpse gauntlets, Witch Doctor would be faster because they don't need anything to be successful because they have Haunt and Haunt's insane for leveling and chaining those massacres together. So it's actually the second fastest leveling class already. Pretty insane, you get Mundanugu for Hadrig. What can go wrong? We have an amazing community over in Discord. We have, you know, chat channels and come say hi and hang out. We're always dropping memes and helping the community out um, for sure. We also, you also can, if you wanna support, you can support on Twitch, Patreon, Discord, social media. You can like my Instagram. You know, my website has access to all that stuff too. So, and in the description down below. But um, yeah, make sure to check the timestamps and the chapters. I'm gonna get back and get to working on the next video. Um, if you don't see the builds updated right away, it's because I'm trying to crank out the videos and then I'll probably double back and make sure all the written guides and all the fine details are, are inked before the season goes live. This is Bloodshed and I'm out of here. Peace.